On paper, Chelsea and Jake didn't look that bad because they didn't have student debt. They both have businesses that can be done both in person and online. They had combined their resources, their business resources with their personal resources. When we asked them to break out their expenses, they didn't even know if their businesses were making money or losing money. They are not overspenders. They have skills, they have work ethic. Now we're gonna teach them how to turn that business into an actual profitable business. Going from broke that empowers young people drowning in debt. I can't do this. To become the CEOs of their own lives. I'm Dan Rosenzweig, CEO of Chegg. My co-host, Tanya Rapley and I, are here to help people find their way out of suffocating debt. This is the year. What you're about to see are real-time, unfiltered conversations, airing the same week in which we shot them. This is Going From Broke, in real time. How did you guys do with your homework? I know that you were supposed to make a cake. There were so many other things. Oh, so I did the cake. We walked it over to the post office and it was like $475 to ship it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, obviously, so I, we, I'm already broke. I can't pay for that to get to New York. It might be cheaper for him to fly right. to yeah. pick the cake up and eat it there than go home. I That's know. what I said. I said, I can hand deliver it for cheaper than this. <laughs> I want us to, um, both of you are entrepreneurs, and I know how challenging that can be, how rewarding it can be, but it also can be challenging as you start to determine what's best for you financially, how to organize your finances, and make decisions based on your family's future. So I wanted to bring in one of my finance friends, Brittany Castro, who is also a certified financial planner, to get you thinking about some of the things you can do today to set you up for the future. Brittany! Hey, it's Brittany. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jake. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Hi Tanya. Hey, Brittany. Hi. How are nice you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys look like such the cute couple over there holding hands. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I think it's so great that both of you have your businesses. I've learned a little bit about that. Um, so as entrepreneurs, I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I think it is a little bit more challenging. It adds a whole other layer of complexity when planning for your financial future. But I, I like to look at it as a fun challenge. It actually allows a lot more tax strategy, a lot more creativity with your finances. Um, so once you kind of start diving in and learning a little bit more about how to set up your own 401k, how to set up your own um, systems, you'll find that it actually can be very beneficial in the long run. So one thing I would say is really make sure you separate your personal and business finances completely. Having that business bank account where you funnel all business income, pay for all business expenses out of that account. And one thing you want to do when you separate is then find the reverse engineer. How much income do you need per month from your business? Um, to pay you a quote unquote salary, right? So you gotta think like a businesswoman and say, I want to make sure I can pay myself $3,000 every month. If I need to pay myself $3,000, I have a thousand of expenses, another thousand I wanna save for taxes. That means my business needs to bring in $5,000 gross revenue per month in order to make this operation work for me. It's really easy to get caught up doing things that may bring in a little bit of money, but they don't maximize your income earning opportunities. So Jake, you also looked mm. into the unit cost mm. of your lessons and how much it costs you can to conduct them. Do you mind sharing that with us? In a worst case scenario, um, on a hour, 60 minute lesson that I would teach, uh, 23 minute drive away, so like 15 miles in Dallas, um, I would make about $40 an hour, $40 and 14 cents an hour. So it'd be a $75 an hour lesson, but it would take about 23 minutes to get there, 23 minutes to drive back. Mm. Um, and then, and then about $4 in gas. Should I only offer online or in person at my studio lessons? There's a confidence that comes from like, Hey man, this is what I need. <laughs> like, I want to make a living. <laughs> right. I have a family. This is what I need. So it's going to be right. better that I only have in-home 
um, lessons or and maybe I was thinking like group lessons. I don't know if that's a possibility, but what are some other ways totally, yeah. to make a bigger income, net income? Making a home call or a house call, that's a premium ad. That's something you actually mm -hmm. could charge in addition to so that you're not eating the cost that you're actually able to take home the amount that you charge for your lessons. I know that my, <laughs> when I, one of my service providers, she does my eyelashes, but she does house calls and I pay for her to come to my house. And I gladly yeah. do because it puts time back in my schedule. So it's a value yeah. add for me and I'm right. okay right. paying her for that. Chelsea, you also are kind of navigating how much should you be charging for your cakes and how much is your time worth? So thinking about that, Brittany, I think this is something that a lot of women struggle with. How do we become more comfortable and confident asking for what we're worth and asking for what we need? I think it's all in our heads often about what we think people will do and not do. But I always find the more clear and yeah. transparent people are with me about their pricing or the way they work, I'm like, yes, it makes sense. I get it. Here's your rate. Here's how you work. I want to do it. When it's all like wishy-washy mm. and I have this thing and maybe this price, then I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. It's too complicated. Just tell me how you work. I want to work with you. What I recommend to all my clients is do um, a weekly money date. So one hour every week where you literally date your money so you could review your budget. Chelsea, maybe this is where you'd like check in with your numbers. Once you kind of nail For sure. how much income you want, then you'll be able to say, okay, here's how much my cakes are. And this is that I'm they're full of love it's obviously right because I'm the one who's like her. I'm like I'll stay up yeah. till 4 a.m working on your cake and make it I'm super sure. special but like you know they don't always know that <laughs> no uh -huh. and they gotta pay you for that they have to pay you for that and it sounds like both of your businesses are pretty visual which is nice like obviously Chelsea of cakes you can show videos of you making the cake and then with every post, okay. um, say, you know, please contact me for your custom cake needs and have what we call a call to action. I think you cannot be uh, shy right. about that. You have to tell people exactly how mm. to contact you. I'm going to challenge you to shoot a video that you will upload to YouTube that is a tutorial or maybe one of your simplest baking, uh, one of your simplest recipes. All right, challenge accepted. Yeah, that sounds great. Jake, can you shoot that for her? Will you help her shoot that? That's, it sounds you like You know, a... we did a little video of um, Dan's cake, and it was really nice, like, having Jake help me set up. And, yeah, so. That sounds fun.